Hello, thank you for watching today's video. Today I'll be going over the five types of hats that you need to have. Uh, first hat will be the uh, fitted, the, you know, it's classic hat. Everybody knows them, everybody loves them. Uh, second hat would be a snapback, which I've worn in the video before. And it's just very versatile, kind of like the fitted hat. It's just a different vibe. It's a little more sportier of a look. It's a little more not so serious of a hat. This hat you want to like sweat in, you know, work in. It's not a big deal. But these are the most expensive hats. So, you know, uh, third hat would be a camp, a camp hat. Uh, with, this is a supreme cap hat. I've had it for about two to three years. I love this hat. I have other supreme cap hats. Uh, but this one happens to be my favorite because of the all over supreme. It's not too flashy, even though it's all over supreme. Uh, and it fits good. It feels good on your head. Uh, fourth hat would be a trucker hat. And this happens to be a Washington Coxkins hat, corduroy with the trucker back. And I just love the way this hat feels and looks, uh, especially if you're trying to pull an outfit off. Um, you know, the, the fitted hat's more of a, you know, white shirt and jeans type of hat. This is more of a, I'm trying to pull put a fit together and, you know, wow some people type of hat. So this is the fourth type of hat you need to have in your wardrobe. The fifth hat, of course, is the dad hat. And this is just one of those hats that I've had for a while and I've worn maybe twice to go to the grocery store in because I have so many hats. As y'all can see, I got more hats right here. But these... These are the five hats that you need to have. Also, some honorable mentions. Um, the, the nice little visor. You can't go with the visor. This is a vintage Nike. Just do it with the Nike on the back that I found at Goodwill. Um, but great tag also. I mean, I've, I've told you once, uh, great tag usually means um, you can make some money out of it if you find it at the thrifts. And also the second honorable mentions was just, it's just, uh, you know, uh, your, your favorite team's hat. You know, you got to rip your team all the time. I like the Packers. I like the Yankees. I like the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? It's just, so it's just some hats to rep your teams with. Um, T-shirts. This shirt I got at Goodwill. Thought it was a, pro a nice little, you know, Dry fit tea, I'll run in it, stay dry, all that shit. Also, I had a I had a comment in my last video about this dude who's like, he's like addicted to weed, I guess, and um, doesn't believe in God. So I'm gonna get into that while I eat some peanut butter on my banana right before the gym. Um, so i used to be an atheist and i used to smoke a lot of weed i still smoke some weed i still got some religious doubts but i think it all started when i became curious about everything but more specifically religions i i started studying all the religions you know i thought i was like a buddhist at one point i wanted to be muslim i wanted to be Jewish multiple times. But I would say my religious doubts comes from intellect, from wanting the truth, from is being a Catholic the right way? Is being a Catholic going to take me to heaven? Which is where I think we all want to go. But that's where my atheist tendencies come from. Just from me absorbing a bunch of knowledge and confusing myself. Um, 
So I would say, um, you're not really religious. You're not really in tune with your religion until something bad happens or you're like, man, nothing's going my way. And then boom, all of a sudden you have a year where like things just start aligning. Everything goes your way and you're like, man, I would have never thought this would turn out like this. So, I mean, now I'm, I consider myself a Catholic, you know, I'm still like, you know, the whole priest situation, you know, nuns beating the kids at school. I still don't fuck with that shit. But I would say I, I am a, um, I would say I am a Catholic and you not believing in God or whatever might just come from just too much information out there and wanting the truth and not knowing what is the truth. You know? And for the uh, smoking a lot of weed part of the guy's comment, I can relate to that too. You know, all my friends used to be pretty much potheads. Like, my friends and I were like the outcasts of the school. Like, everyone would look at us funny. Like, you know, some of us, we got along through smoking weed after school. Like, that's how, that's the only, that's the only reason we were friends is because we all like to smoke weed. But then you start realizing that, you know, one guy is never buying weed, you know, or one guy is always like, you know, asking for money and never paying you back. And then you start asking yourself, is this really... Is this really a friendship? You know, is he using us? You know, the rest of the friend group? You know, uh, you know, is do I want to keep smoking weed? That is the question. Do I want to keep, keep smoking weed with this person? And why are we friends? Well, the fact of the matter is, usually you and some scumbag are usually friends because nobody else is friends with either one and then later on i started like skipping on family functions i wouldn't i wouldn't go with my family to the mall i would like you know i would skip the barbecue the um the graduation party i would skip a bunch of shit uh just so i could smoke weed and my mom was usually always like, okay, you don't want to go. You're growing up. You don't, you know, whatever. Um, but I think my dad always knew what was going on. As a matter of fact, he knew what was going on. Because he waited for me in the driveway a couple of nights to like two in the morning. He would ask me to empty my pockets or he would ask me what I put on my, in my dashboard. And both times it was weed. It was like an eighth. It was like two and a half grams. It was some shit like that. So my dad knew what was going on the whole time. But ultimately, my relationship with weed came after my relationship with food, which was not a good one. I would overeat. I would wake up at two in the morning. I would binge. I would eat like, like leftovers steak from the fridge like i wouldn't even put it in a microwave because i didn't want to make noise so i would just overeat and again this is derived from not having many friends not feeling self-worth not not um pretty much just numbing the pain with food uh that's you know that's what i used to do I've gotten better at it, but it's just an ongoing battle. Um, and what I've learned from overeating and abusing marijuana is that I have an addictive personality. Like, that's what I've learned throughout my 22 years. Um, so, yeah, like, most of that is just holding yourself accountable, um... Not letting yourself get go off the rails, and if you do, being able to detect 
all right that's my personality flaw um taking over and i need to address it but yeah i feel you man like you know if you're an atheist if you smoke a lot of weed you know it's not a big deal it's just most of the time it's from like like the smoking weed part is from not having friends, not being very social, not, you know. And, you know, yeah, it's just from not being very social, not having friends, not wanting to talk to people. Um, not wanting to go somewhere because you don't want to talk to people. Because if you talk to people, you know, more likely than not, you're going to be high and then you're going to have some anxiety coming down on you. So just, you know... I don't know much about the dude's question. I just know that he abuses weed and he's quite an atheist. And I, I feel him. I feel him. And But what, one day you're going to have a good year or a bad year. And then things are going to turn out all right. And then you're going to be like, man, maybe there is a God. Maybe there is something looking out for me. But yeah, I'm pretty much done with my banana. Thank you for watching the video. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.